You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 62, Deep Dive into the World of Darkness, Werewolf the Apocalypse. Today we take a deep look into the world of darkness, RPG, Werewolf the Apocalypse. We discuss our experience with the system and details about it. We also discuss how we've story told the system and what we may do different if we ran it again today. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person, Silver won't be doing aggravated damage to him, Jared. Because I'm a werewolf. I got that one. Like, I am a werewolf. I'm a werewolf fiend. Well, if you were a werewolf, you would be taking aggravated damage. Oh, yeah, shit. Because you're not a werewolf. I'm not a werewolf. (laughs) Still lethal, though. But if you were to hunt Jared, uh, I would suggest using silver. Just just in case. Just in case. You never know. You never know. It's quite expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's your week been? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. Um, uh, you know, again, got back from South Carolina pretty recently. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're finally back in the swing of things, which are, is good. Um, I got to see Brian a lot while I was out there, Lucky which bastard. was uh, – it's just so good to see him. Like it, I know. I I I love that we we game with him uh, online. I miss him in person. Yeah, I love that we game with him online. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry, if you're hearing a lot of background noise. That's Jared uh, <laughs> sitting back in a recliner. <laughs> sorry about that, folks. But anyways, uh, no, I I just I miss gaming with him. I miss seeing him on a regular basis. It's just like man, I, I love having him at the table every every night but it's just like it's just tough because you remember like oh man remember when he was here and like you could just hang out with you him you could hug him <laughs> yeah but uh no uh no everything else is good uh you and you have been going nuts because we haven't gamed in a couple of weeks yeah we we and... had uh it's like th- two three solid two two weeks off full two, weeks two full weeks two off, full yeah. weeks but you you have uh, maybe you give give Jared an inch Jared goes a mile I mean I he's made uh, maps for our our shared lighthouse which is our base of operations in our game I mean like you've gone nuts 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 um yeah no it's um you know uh, so my my game is is pretty much ready to go it, it's completed it's got music it's got forty two NPCs thirty eight maps. Um, no, 38 documents of evidence, like 14 to like 20 maps. Now it's even more cause I added the lighthouse. Um, you know, I, it's got fully fleshed out story. And when I say pieces of evidence, I mean like, uh, I've been creating documents. Um, our listeners might not know, um, uh, you know, one of the parts of my job when I originally started, um, you know, in training, was actually a lot of photoshopping, uh, doing a lot of image manipulation. And that coincided with my, my hobby of doing maps. I, I I really enjoy doing maps. I find it very relaxing, very enjoyable to do just, just as me. Um, and so, you know, I got better because work required me to do it a lot. And it's, and now I, I, I'm even more, I would still consider myself amateur when it comes to Photoshop. I'm not I'm not a pro by any, like my, my brother is a pro. Like he can take your head off and put it onto a horse and make it actually like blend layers and stuff like that. It's crazy. Um, but you know, he, he helped me along the way, you know, taught me and, uh, but no, I, I, you know, sometimes I just like taking the creative juices in a different direction and give it to my friends just as, 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 as fun as another reason to get excited about game. Uh, like I did a logo for, for our detective group, ASI, um, did a cool logo, um, using some Photoshop skills, did the lighthouse did, um, you know, and, and it's just, it, it's a nice relaxing way for me to sit back and just kind of enjoy gaming as the hobby. And just, um, you know, uh, my wife and I just kind of, um, You know, something truly special about my wife and I is that we can sit and just enjoy each other's company. Uh, And, you know, uh, 
not last weekend, not the weekend before, but the weekend before that, um, we sat in the living room just listening to, um, my wife is big into jazz. She likes jazz. I'm actually not a fan of jazz, uh, interestingly enough. Um, but she found some like light jazz and we just sat in the living room for like three hours. I was doing my gaming stuff. She was reading some new study on the human brain and how psychology can affect neuros or neurons and, um, and, and like th- therapy can affect uh, how neurons and, and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, and we we're just listening to jazz and didn't say a word for three hours, but I just looked over her and I'm like, the, I'm the luckiest man in the world. I am. I, I married my best friend. So that was way off topic. Yeah. Way you, off oh topic, yeah. my God. All right. Well, okay. So what's the topic for this week? Oh wait, I get it. Werewolves, right? Werewolves. Yeah. So we've, uh, obviously you, if you've been listening to us, you know, for more than a minute, um, we do world of darkness and we started with werewolf, the apocalypse. So we're going to just kind of dive into the world of darkness and kind of do some of these deep dives here and there. Uh, we wanted to talk about werewolf, the apocalypse. If you are not familiar with the world of darkness, it is not a D 20 system. It's a D 10 system. It's technically called the storyteller system. Is oh. the actual title of it. Uh, but anyways, it, it revolves around if you are going to roll dice, it's 10-sided dice, um, and your dice pools are a combination of an attribute and an ability. Um, that's how you, you get to the the, the, you know, the dice pool that you have. Um, if you've ever played Call of Cthulhu, because um, I did end up playing it more recently, probably within the last couple of months, um, it reminds me very much of, I mean, I can see the influences in because World of Darkness came after these games. Call of Cthulhu has been around for decades, um, but it it the it, Call of Cthulhu is a percentile dice system, but it's based in kind of the same sort of difficulties. Where like um, you've got these uh, you know super like ten percent type difficulties to yeah. succeed in something or like you know 40 percent, which is kind of how the world of darkness system works so i just didn't want anybody to be like when we start talking about some of these yeah. concepts you know to keep you away from it you know there's only seven health bubbles on the sheet it's a very lethal game it's a very very lethal game um and when we are when we're rolling dice it's very um like i said there's just the dice pools aren't huge when you get to like a 10 dice pool like you have a massive dice pool to, okay, it's huge. <laughs> um, so uh, to give you a little bit of background, we, we are going to be talking about Werewolf the Apocalypse very specifically. Um, uh, we are not talking about the fifth edition, which is coming out very soon. Um, I kind of want to do this because not too long ago, uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood came out uh, for video games. I was very excited uh, from the trailers, and then I actually saw the gameplay. <laughs> Jared's like, yeah. And then watched all the reviews, and they all told me to wait for a sale. Um, so, uh, actually, Aaron Aaron watched the reviews that said wait for a sale. I watched was, the reviews that said just, a, just don't buy it. It wasn't just a sale; it was a deep sale. It was a deep <laughs> sale. So, um, we're off the apocalypse essentially to to give you a, a foundation of knowledge. Uh, werewolves are called Garou. Uh, they're that's what they call their species, their race. Um, Werewolves are essentially chosen uh, by Gaia or the spirit of Mother Earth to defend Earth against uh, evil, which is um, personified by a creature called the Worm. And there's also two other uh, great spirits. Uh, There's the Weaver, which is more like organization, technology, uh, advancement. Um, And then there's the Wild, which is pure creativity. So those are the three main spirits and then you've got Gaia Mother Earth who wants and, and there are several other spirits out there and if you are interested uh, there's so much online to learn more about werewolf if you you want to learn about the celestials and, and, and how they all align it's very cool um, but what I what I really wanted to talk about um, as Aaron mentioned werewolf was like one of the, the first were- world of darkness game we ever started with. That, that was how we got into the world of darkness was Werewolf. You brought Werewolf Second Edition to us because your brother had played it. Yep. Um, and that's what you brought in. And I remember we did that game. And we knew, I mean, we knew nothing. We knew nothing about werewolves. And I, I almost feel like um, 
if you want to, if you want to talk about the evolution of us playing werewolf, I almost feel like learning more about the inner workings of how werewolf worked almost made our games worse. <laughs> it did. It really <laughs> did. Because in the first game, you had no concept of how many werewolves None. were supposed to exist. Um, and even in our most successful game, you didn't really have any concept of how many werewolves were supposed to exist. No. And in uh, you know in that first game, it was you know it was such a new system. It was so so brand new and like you know to us and like there's just I mean that that was the one where we it was, it was a whole new world. Exactly. I mean it was just it was such a good. And, and you you just rolled with it really well. It was the first time that we ever dove into a to a long story as well. Right, and um, you know, and and, and we grew in, in Aaron's right as we learned more. Sometimes we actually got worse. Um, so to kind of give you some more foundations uh, about the antagonists of the of the system, so the worm, uh, the evil spirit, um, essentially uses human pawns. Uh, to destroy Mother Earth. Uh, these evil pawns include oil companies, video game companies that specialize in violence, uh, even a role-playing company that specializes in, you know, hack-and-slash games, which I, I particularly just... Tee-hee-hee. Um, but they also, you know, chemical corporations, pharmaceutical corporations, anything that is known for pollutant. Um, so... Really, when it when it comes down to werewolf, um, the 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 book will take you in one direction. Okay, the book will try to guide you towards. This is a game of essentially this this podcast is probably going to get us looked at by the FBI because I'm going to be saying the word terrorist a lot. Um, you are a group of supernatural eco terrorists. Um trying to stop evil corporations from destroying the earth. Um, to, to put it in those terms really just does a disservice to uh, what White Wolf created. And I even have to say throughout my years of storytelling, specifically Werewolf, I have done it a great disservice. Um, not knowing and not thinking a little bit more you know, it's, 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 it's as you grow and as you mature, you realize that the story is, is, is not about, um, well, there's a group of vampires hiding out in this werewolf house and vampires kill people. So werewolves are going to kill, go kill some vampires. Um, you know, and, and really uh, one of the major themes that I missed and it is a huge theme and I, and I feel that white wolf actually didn't expand upon it enough. They really could have. Um, because they, they, they did what a lot of, what a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, uh, gaming companies do it's, it's give you options. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there, there's a reason for this. The reason that they give you so many freaking options is because, uh, they want you to buy more books. Um, okay. That's, that's a little cynical, but, um, you know, some, some books they put out because they, they want you to explore and expand more upon the, 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 the system and, into, and to enjoy more. So there's, there's a altruistic, but there is also a, a profit margin. I will never ignore that. And when it comes to, to white wolf, I'm sorry, the profit margin, I, I feel that was a strong motivating factor in a lot of the publications they put out. Um, it was just, ah, how are we going to increase? Cause uh, I will never forgive them for uh, vampire, the Requiem. I will never forgive them for just completely upending their entire uh, series to get you to buy the books all over again. Uh, it was uh, really bad. Um, so uh, when, when it comes down to white wolf, what I feel like they missed the most was the idea that uh, werewolves are limited few in number. Um, and when, when you really dive into how few in number it should be very, very few in number. Um, and in this, um, meeting with other werewolves should be a, a, a candlelight moment. It, it, it should be like, holy crap, we actually met another group of us. We've never met one of you before. Yeah, to have like 
50 together is a ton of werewolves. That would be a huge amount of werewolves. And, and, you know, when you go into the player's guide, they actually talk about level 5 Cairns that do host populations between 50 and 60. And that's what the problem is. They always flip-flopped between werewolves are very few and far between. And there's a Cairn with 50 to 60. There's about five of those. Like, that, that that's a lot. I thought you said there are few. You know, like, when you say there's few, there's, like, what, 300 tigers left in the world? Like, they're on the verge of extinction, and there's, like, 300 left. Like, technically, a, a college professor could memorize all their names in a day. <laughs> My psychology professor did that as a trick. He memorized everyone's names in one day. It was very impressive. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. So, um... The, the the thing about it is is that they don't push on uh, that enough. The sense of we are by ourselves, we are, um, you know, uh, completely devoid of guidance, uh, unprepared in in engaging in a in a war, um, and against an all odds, you know? And these are three major themes that I feel that White Wolf never really latched onto. Um, because once you establish or realize these three themes, suddenly all those books that they put out, because they put out books for every different tribe. Of, they, had, they had the 13 tribe books and even then the lost tribe books. Well, like, for example, let's take one. So there were 13 tribes and each tribe goes to a very stereotypical version. Like, let us go with the Geta Fenris. The Geta Fenris is a tribe of werewolves that are warriors, 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 warriors. That's all we do. Um, you know, they're based out of Germany and they essentially love war and in Norse mythology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very stereotypical. Now, in that book, they have like several camps that you can belong to. You can be the sons of Thor and and yada yada. And in 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 building all the supplemental material, they lost sight of like I thought there were only like three hundred. So what? There's only one son of Thor. There's only maybe, maybe two. Maybe two. And the rest of the camps just have no one. <laughs> like nobody <laughs> follows these camps because <laughs> they. <laughs> Excuse me. They completely forgot about all this. Again, you, you, you have to remember, too, is that the werewolf, um, if you look back in the history of the werewolf book, the way that the history plays out is that there was a time when there were a ton of werewolves. There, yeah, there was, before man learned fire, essentially, werewolves were plentiful. And so maybe that's what they're getting at. Yeah, but they never mention that in the books. They no. never talk about that as prehistoric. Like, we had camps back before man hit rocks, and then you'd go, well, I think Thor doesn't come into mythology until, like, the Dark Ages. And they're like, well, good point. But they they lose sight of that. Now, if you are crafting, or if, if you are thinking about walking the world of werewolf, or looking for a different story, right? Let's say, I, I, I am hoping this podcast reaches somebody who's maybe in between games, wants to t- have a different look on werewolf, wants to embrace 20 plus years of experience doing werewolf. I mean, that was our, our bread and butter. I mean, it was the core, the core three from white wolf, which was werewolf vampire. And, um, we jumped into mage later. So it's basically the core two. Yeah. Um, and, and again, this is old world of darkness. If I, if I didn't mention it earlier, I, I know that I talked about the, the, dice system for it but we're specifically talking old world of darkness and not new we'll never world talk of about new world of darkness. because that's the one that jerry doesn't like and we know it's beyond not liking i i detest it it was a slap in the face of every person who who had owned like every book like i i had a closet shelf that was buckling i owned so many of those freaking books okay <laughs> buckling and then they're just like forget about it buy more books it was a slap in my face. Sorry. So, you know, with Werewolf, what I want you to start looking at more is those hidden themes. And I think that's a lesson that we can really learn from Werewolf the Apocalypse 
is when we start looking at uh, gaming books overall, um, we need to look at more at, at, at the hidden themes, the quiet themes, the themes that they don't expand upon. You know, because um, when you look at werewolves, and again, like I said, the FBI is going to be looking at this podcast very, very hard. Hopefully they're like, oh, they're talking about werewolves just next 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 podcast um so we have a listener in washington dc now (laughs) (laughs) we have a couple (laughs) we have a listener out of langley virginia (laughs) (laughs) shit um so werewolves if played properly should be essentially uh unguided uh very disorganized terrorist organization with little to no hope of actually meeting their goal of defending the earth. Now I love a good story of the hero's journey. We start off as this disorganized group of five people. And and I was very fortunate enough to actually create a game that was very similar to that. I mean, uh, the game that we created that was over well over a year, it's probably one, what almost a year and a half too. Which one are you talking about? Elders. Elders. Yeah, I mean, Elders was disorganized to start. I mean, it was, it was a chance meeting. And it was. And, and and eventually you guys created a cairn by going out and finding all these werewolves all over the world. It was about it was about two years, I think, is how long you, you did it for. And, I mean, that was the hero's story. And, and they, they eventually fought off the worm. Um, uh, you know, like the they, they got to the end times and were able to actually... In the werewolf book, there is a uh, uh, the prophecy of the phoenix, which talks about the end of days, effectively, and the signs that will lead up to the end of days. What Jared ended up doing, I think, uh, again, I think a lot of people have probably experienced this before, is you start a game not knowing where you want to go, and then you fit the game into the to this direction of what you wanted to do, which was you took us from the sign you you basically started popping signs up Mm -hmm. for it to fulfill the prophecy so you you made things fit into place but you didn't have that in mind when you first started (laughs) (laughs) no um you know so for 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 werewolf you might actually look towards uh, the the gathering will be very hard you do please go back to our gathering episode talking about that that you know a moment that really brings the characters together because what will bring five people that it's chance meeting think about it 300 tigers in the world the, the, this werewolves. is the tough thing with with werewolf because werewolves operate in packs okay correct and um in all of our werewolf games jared said you were brought together by the uh the elder at the cairn the cairn is the is the place that the werewolves commiserate this is the places that have like maybe 50 werewolves at the most if you're one of the really really big ones sure okay big ass cairn so the 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 alpha of that cairn or the head of it is going to bring you there and he says you are now a pack oh my god i did that so many this is how most of our gatherings went um and here's the thing that probably would have been better than that is instead of saying you are now a pack, we were a pack and we've already established ourselves as a pack. We built the, the, the background story as to why we came together as a pack would have been much better. And Jared just said you were summoned by the alpha and the alpha wants you to do this. Okay. It, it makes that beginning better and easier um, because obviously what, what, what he's skipping there is why the hell would I assemble a bunch of rank one? Why would I assemble a bunch of green, green, green people into one group when I could evenly distribute them amongst my experienced groups and they would learn and grow? Yeah. Why, why would I do it and then send them off to what we do? And then this has kind of led us to, you know, down the line, we started saying, uh, and again, you'll probably people do this in D and D a lot as well, um, which is make level five characters or we make rank two rank three yeah. characters it just makes the experience a little bit better but we still never got to the point of like you're already a group it was i, brought, I put you together and it's just it was always weird 
Um, it was it, always it, weird. Don't make it sound weird. <laughs> it it just it was because we were assembled from all over, and so like again, this is the like like you're assembling heroes from all over the world, and you're putting them together, and you're like, you're the greatest team that ever was, and y'all do great, and y'all take care of great things. You know what? <laughs> Fuck you. <too. laughs> <laughs> all right, I was I, I was growing. I'm not I'm not telling you that you're a horrible person <laughs> yes, or anything. You are. <laughs> And point of fact, very sharply. <laughs> I'm just, this was a lot of our gatherings. It was a lot time. of our gatherings, but let's tell the world. No, and it's good that Aaron actually tells the world because that's how we got better. Was And, and what we're trying to do is avoid you having the same fate. But I mean, it, it, the reality is that, is that you're going to put your players together in a pack and you're going to make them work together. And this is where, where things come into Again, if you want to go back a couple episodes ago to um, to reference about fitting in the lanes, werewolves are thirteen tribes. They have stereotypes against one another. Okay, there are, there are the there are werewolves which are the silver fangs who are like born leaders. Okay, and then there are the shadow lords who are also born leaders, but they stab people in the back. <laughs> They're the best tribe. Though, okay, so and then there are there are the bonars who are basically bums and then there are the black furies who are as an all women tribe for the term uh what is the term? homeless oh uh indigent there we go indigent, indigent. People. okay and then you've got the the get of federus who are you know the beat shit tribe like you said you have the black furies who are all women and if you happen to play a male black fury you are treated like shit and the funny <laughs> thing is if you only got 300 people left in the world you're not going to treat the male just because like we had a male born, so we're gonna treat him like crap, so he commits suicide. So we're down to two ninety nine. Okay, and then there are the Uctena and the Wendigo, who are are you know different uh, you know Native American tribes, and then you've got um, uh, you've got man I'm, the Glass Walkers, who are the Technology Tribe, and you've got the Red Talons, who are the the the, the anti the, the anti Technology Tribe, and then you've got like so like I, I I'm throwing these out there to kind of show you like like. Everybody wants to play one of these, not because of the personality of the tribe, but because of the powers behind the tribe. It is very true. Watch that as a storyteller, because they're they're gonna they're gonna go through the book. They're gonna get it's it's like when people go through the book and like immediately go to the spells list. This this, this, this saying, is, is literally choosing your class in D anD. d The only difference here, though, is that your alignments in the way that like like they already have preconceived notions of the other classes okay like that's the problem <laughs> let's let's see like 13, 13 tribes I, I, I mean what you got like if, if you divide 300 by 13 like what is that I mean, so it's like four Jared, people Jared, per Jared, tribe Jared, Jared's <laughs> obviously you know giving you like like you know you, you probably have like 500 werewolves. Well, what, what, what I'm suggesting is, 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 is read those books and then just take all of a lot of that crap out. A preconceived notion about 50 other people on the planet. Here's the thing. If you are the last 50 on the earth, I'm not going to care that you are into computers and I'm not. We are the last people, and that is an unknown and untalked about theme in Werewolf, is the coming together because we are the last. We are the only hope. We are the the last Jedi. I'll take anyone. (laughs) I'll take anyone. Okay? You're not going to have a tribe of of female um, uh, werewolves that number, what, 50? Who are like... No, we hate all men. No. They won't they're, work with men. And they, and they won't work with men. No, there's three, there's 500 of, even if there's a thousand of us, that's all that's left. And it's an untalked about theme and it's a golden theme. It's, it is the hero stand. It even, is the even, Spartan even 300. With that, even with that theme, if there's so few of them, like, okay, so there, there are three breeds. There's homid, which means that you were born as a human. human. There's lupus, which means that you were born as a... So I, I, when you play you play werewolf, you pick three things. You pick the tribe that you're a part of, you pick the moon that you were born under, and you pick the breed that you were born into. And 
these three things determine your power set. Okay, and they determine starting stats. They determine a lot of things. They determine what powers you get later. They determine what powers you get later. And, and so I, I bring this up because, so the two that are that are pretty straightforward are uh, tribe and auspice. So auspice is the moon cycle that you were born under. And it's and so, your job within the, the guru nation. Yes. And, but the breed is the one that's the funky one. Okay, because the reality is, is that if you read the book, most people are supposed to be born Hamid or human, okay? Few people are supposed to be born lupus, okay? Which means you're probably a red talon because it's doubtful that you're going to be a glass walker and a lupus, okay? Because you were born as a wolf. But and you so lived, many people have played that. You, you lived your life as a wolf. But the reason why people wanted to play it wasn't because they wanted to play the non-technological glass walker they wanted to play because they had five gnosis five no and gnosis is what fuels it, it's it's their amount of spells they can essentially cast a day yes uh, it, and, it, and then and then the the, the the sweet spot between the two was metis. metis okay but here's the problem is that metis are born in as a crinos guru okay which means that they're they're full werewolf full when they, werewolf when they're born okay they, they probably killed their parents wow. <laughs> um and they are treated like crap. They are the bottom, bottom of the totem pole. And it, it's just, it's interesting because, like... If there I, was only 500 of you, I gotta be like... Uh, like, I know we're supposed to treat you like crap, but, like, we're running out of us. <laughs> Dude, we got, th- we, we, we got 500 left, even if we got 1,000 left. Okay, so, like, I, I, while you were uh, talking about uh, the, the, the breeds, I looked it up. I, I ran the math. Okay. There's, like... 40 of each tribe globally. Okay, global. We're talking global. 40 of each group. And and, and that's a strikingly long or small number. But what essentially White Wolf was doing, and their major mistake, and what I hope that you avoid as a storyteller, is they they base that off their vampire book. Vampire is their flagship. It's it's their moneymaker. And vampire works great because there are preconceived notions and these vampires do tend to uh, embrace or take people in that fit their preconceived notions. So let's, for example, the Toreador. The Toreador vampire clan are very artistic. If I am a vampire who is an artistic person, I'm going to want someone who has the same interests as me, someone that I can put up with for eternity... Because we don't die. I hope he likes art too. I'm going to only embrace somebody who enjoys art. So the stereotype propagates. We will deep dive into vampire because I feel like that's its own ball of wax. But like, they have the same preconceived notions. And Jared is right. It, vampire is the is the book that if you probably heard of White Wolf in World of Darkness. It's vampire. It's vampire. You've probably played a vampire game if you played World of Darkness. Werewolf came after Vampire. And and essentially what they did was they poured it over these that that section of having preconceived notions. And they forgot about oh, there's only like uh thirty eight of these. And people and, and the where game. if you if you look at how how they, they, they scaled the power I mean, again, this is one of the my gripes with White Wolf as a whole, is that power and why we sort of kind of created our own world and we were kind of homebrewing. And again, we'll talk about more about homebrew in, in a later episode as well. But um, the reason why we, we homebrewed what we're doing right now is because we've played in these systems and none of these things work together. They just don't. They, 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 unfortunately, they, they don't play well in the sandbox together. We have told successful stories in every mode of them. Mm-hmm. But Werewolf is a funky one because the best stories that we told in Werewolves are when we said, Werewolves are abundant. Yes. We didn't we didn't limit them to 300, 600, 1000 in the world. We said that werewolves were like probably 30,000. Yeah. The world. And 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 but we we did it because we locked into those preconceived notions. Had we embraced a different viewpoint which as I've matured, I've I've always sit around tinkering with the next werewolf game. I have. I'll admit it. In my free in my free time I'm just like what would I do? No, I would do this, I'd do that. Maybe that. Um, 
So I, I've always tinkered with it and I've realized the errors in, in, in old ways. If you create it where they're not abundant, where they're coming together as a group of people, it is such a tremendous story of a small group of people on the verge of extinction fight to save the world. Is that not almost every freaking Netflix show ever? A small group of people fight to save the world? And, and, um, don't don't get me wrong. Werewolves as a actual werewolf, meaning that they can shape change, are few. Um, Kinfolk are more they, People who hold the werewolf gene, okay, meaning that they can birth other werewolves, which are kinfolk. Those are abundant. There are a lot of them. Yes. Okay. It's just that the the concept the conception of somebody who turns into a werewolf because if you if you follow along the werewolf thing, you basically at adolescence you transform for the first time, and mm-hmm. then you are taken in by other werewolves to to be protected. Um, kinfolk were the family that likely like you were born into, but you you are taken from them and brought into this kind of eco terrorist world. So like <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> um, but it, 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 it's interesting because you think about that again this is another thing that we never explored as werewolves is it happens at 13 yeah okay that's when you are brought in as a cub into the werewolf wor- world below rank one this is brand new werewolf this is you're not even allowed outside of the fortress of solitude also known as this is new mutants <laughs> yes um and 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 you know it, it was just, these are some golden themes that I, I really hope to spread at Werewolf and looking at the beauty of the game. Not how the, not how they wrote for business because they were putting out that business, right? They need to put out a book. They had a great primer for vampire. They poured it over a lot of the themes, but it's those, those small things. And I guess the, the center of, of this episode is, is talking about werewolf and, and encouraging you guys to, uh, guys and gals, to engage in, 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 in there. Um, maybe enjoy it a little bit. Aaron and I have a lot of experience. So if, you know, you email us, uh, message us on Facebook, need some more advice on, on certain things, uh, you know, we're more than happy to help. Um, you know, it, it is to look for that golden egg that's hidden in between the pages. It's, it's not smack dab on the front page. You know, it, it, it's because had we looked at Werewolf in that sense of this is it, you know, like, and we're against all odds. What hero story? It, they essentially hand you what every D&D game tries to be. You start off as a ragtag bunch trying to stop X evil, except in D&D, you create the X evil. Werewolf handed it to you canned. Its name is the worm. And it is, you know, and and here's bad guy organization one, two, three, and four. And now, congratulations, we've inducted you into the world of eco-terrorism. Um, and, and, and it's funny because as as someone who enjoys modern history, I, I, I the history that I actually studied in school was modern history focused on uh, the Iraq and Afghanistan uh, war or the global war on terrorism. Um, that's what I studied. I, I still study it. I still listen to all the books because, uh, you know, I'm always flying, so I uh, listen to books on tape. But um, to understand that organization, or evil, um, it, it gives you so much more insight into uh, into what a werewolf group would be. You know, people who are at age 13 transformed into a monster are then taken by other monsters and told these laws and these ways. But the thing that I never saw back then was it's an old man, you know, always fear the fear an old man in a war because he has lived a long time. Um, telling you preconceived notions. If he were to follow the book, he would be telling you preconceived notions. He probably, let, let's say he is a get Fenris, he probably hasn't met a freaking Glasswalker. Whoever taught him said, well, the Glasswalkers, they're all into, uh, you know, and let's say he was, he became a werewolf in the 80s. He's all, they're all into those Mac 
Apple computers. I, I guess maybe that was our failing in players in this. You, I think maybe you started. No, it was failing up. in the storytelling. Oh, I, I, I always, I know that you always tried to go for less and less werewolves, but maybe there was a failing partially in us as players being that we never embraced that story of kind of the desolation piece to it. I wonder what a werewolf game today would look like. Maybe you'll find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but no, it, it, it's, it can be so much more emotional, especially when there are so few you know, and they're, and they're connected by, by cells and, and cairns are, are tiny. Cairns are a campsite that you visit and you try to keep alive. The one other thing that I want to point out with, um, and again, the, 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 there's so much more to the werewolf because there's other shape changing breeds and stuff. Well, yeah, there, there are other shape changing breeds, um, but we're not going to get, yeah, we're not going to get into that, but, um, and I think, I think one of the things that, led us to kind of go our own direction and create our own our own things. I know that you wanted to kind of redo werewolves in your in this world. Well, that's what created. I've been doing, yeah. Um, but one of the things that we always talked about um, was this, you know, getting away from... Because the, the story is always the same. The story is stop the worm, stop the worm, stop the worm, stop the worm. Okay? So, like... What are we supposed to do? Stop the worm. Okay. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that that's tough because once you've played and again th this is probably one of the things that made it hard to continue to play werewolf once you've played through all the way to the end and stopping the worm mm -hmm. like it's hard to stop the worm again okay it's hard to play the same story again because we stopped the big bad guy okay so when we come back in and we play another story it's it's hard to come up with a fresh story always remember that with the werewolf game that maybe your big bad guy is a bad guy and you can never stop the worm okay but if you go down this this thing where we're gonna stop the worm at the end of the story it's i wouldn't recommend going down that path i would I, I i i think that once you've done it it takes away some of the luster of werewolf it does meaning that it's hard to come back into it and play it again knowing that's the big bad guy and we've stopped him once before. And, and and considering there are so many villains just abundant in that in that story, even in the story of, like, we fight human corruption, that's a big deal. Like, think about it. That's a noble virtue. We're going to stop oil companies, but, I mean, in the same regard, like, do you really want to stop oil companies? Because it's going to start this, like, global... And again, this might be the part where you, if you have played through Werewolf, or you've played some Werewolf, or you're thinking about playing Werewolf, where you inject some homebrew into it. Uh, that's, I think that was my big point of, of this episode. Homebrew, whenever you get a box system, and Werewolf comes out, I mean, like, you get the core rulebook, you're good to go. Off to the races. It's not hard to understand. The system's actually very easy, very quick. It's when you homebrew it that really you can create something special. So there are two things, I guess, to this one. One, homebrewing. It's so cool. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Take the parts of the book that you like. Use it. Take the parts of the book you don't like. Toss it. And two, look for those hidden meanings in each one of those gaming books that you're presented with. Whether it be Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, Star Trek. What is the quiet theme that you're not looking for? And take a moment when you're sitting there with that book and be like, what is the theme? That's a good point. Yeah. You want anything? add anything else to this episode, Jerry? Nope, that's going to be it. All right, well, uh, we hope you enjoyed us digging into Werewolf just a little bit. We barely scratched the surface uh, yeah, on it. Yeah, we understand, like, we barely scratched we the surface. We barely point. scratched the surface on it. We, we, we went over some pretty uh, heavy things. We could probably do an episode per tribe. I mean, we could... Probably I can complain about every tribe. Yeah, we, we could probably dig into this even more. So we, we there might be a, a follow up to this somewhere down the line. But anyways, if you uh, if you like the uh, the podcast, enjoyed the episode, enjoyed any of your other episodes, want to give us some comments and feedback, um, or do have questions about the world of darkness, like maybe you're planning on running a game, you have run a game, um, we are very well versed in it. We'd be happy to to give you some like very targeted. Uh, suggestions on that as well. So uh, level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com is how you can email us or you can find us at facebook.com slash level up your gaming. 
Um, also, we are on YouTube if you uh, don't listen to your podcast on a podcast site. So, Jared. Smash that like button. Thank you. I was like, you're going to smash it. <laughs> smash us. Um, otherwise, go ahead and review us on your favorite podcast site, uh, Apple Podcasts, Podchaser are two good ones. Uh, even if you don't get your podcast there, it uh, just helps be more searchable there. And uh, share with your friend, gaming group, uh, spouse, uh, mom, dad, I don't know. Boss. Boss. Anyone, who, anyone who, who's, who's willing to listen to two goofs uh, talk about uh, role-playing for a little bit. And uh, anyways, we thank you for listening. I uh, hope you had a good week. And uh, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week, everyone.